Father, bless these that are learning. This is the time of learning. Bless these that are reaching up to God. Uh, this is a time to reach up to God. We pray that you will strengthen each of these and that you will anoint each of these, that they shall rejoice in your mighty power. Uh, we ask you that the truth will be made simple to our hearts and that each of us shall be dominated by truth. And as we enter into these subjects that are quite unusual, uh, let us enter into them with an open mind and an open heart to understand. And for your blessings, we thank you. And all the people said, we feel highly honored to uh, present these lessons. And uh, this lesson today <clears throat> has to do with a person. In our series here on ailing entities, we're showing you how uh, creatures that are fallen angels that fell when Satan uh, fell from heaven. One third of the angels of heaven uh, were cast down with Satan and they are the hurting, they are the hurting ones for humanity. What you have to know is this, and, and I'll be teaching that in this lesson right now, that really you are neutral as far as they're concerned. They don't like you nor dislike you. You don't mean a thing to them. If you went to an ant hill and you saw the ants down there, if you were to take your foot and screw it around on top of that ant bed and destroy it, you'd have no idea how the ants felt about it because you're not an ant. They may be really cussing you, you see. But uh, as soon as you're through, immediately they restore their, their home and they continue their, their work with the devil the same way. He has never been a human. He has never been a human. He has no idea how you feel about anything. He only knows this. He got thrown out of heaven. He will ultimately be cast into hell and he hates God. Now, in knowing that God loves you, then he has to hurt you in order to show God how much he hates God. If I had a little sons here and, and a neighbor hated me, but yet was afraid of me, the best thing he could do to hurt me would be hurt the son. If he slapped the son inside the head, he says, now you take that. Not the son, but the father. You see, knowing that the son being hurt would hurt the father, possibly more than the son. So when the Satan comes against you, he's actually not coming against you. He's coming against God because he hates God. So you are in the center of a, of a cosmic warfare. Now, when you know this, you know how to deal with life better. Uh, now, 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 the reason that Jesus Christ had to become a man was otherwise he would never know you. If he remained God, he would never know you. He could not know you until blood flowed through his veins and somebody pinched him, he felt it. And, and, and when he got tired, he knew it. And when his belly ached with emptiness, he, he, would, he would know his belly was empty, you see? And then, and then he understood it. He, he had to be, he had to be uh, uh, denied by Peter. Uh, he, had to, he had to have the Judas experience of, of selling him in order to know what it happens when you're sold. When, when, when a best friend of yours sells you out and you say, oh, Jesus, he said, honey, I had it too. I had a Judas just like you. Come on, let's keep going. You still here? Amen. Yeah. And, and so the difference between Jesus and the devil is that the devil has never been a human, will never be a human, has no concept of you at all. He only knows what he hears, but he does know this. He got cast out of heaven. He knows God very well. And he knows God made you in his image and his likeness. And in order to hurt God, he hurts you. Now that's the whole message of, of uh, alien entities, that they are here to hurt God through you because you are the apple of God's eye. And when you understand these things in their perspective, it shows you how to live. It shows you how to shout. It shows you how to praise God. It shows you how to get the victories when you know you're on the winning team and all you've got to do is say it and you're on the winning team in Jesus' name. Now, today's lesson is uh, assisting you with a person that I came to know real well. I, I came uh, to know him in your introduction there. I came to know Arlindo Oliveira, uh, a, a former witch doctor in the capital city of Brasilia, uh, down in Brazil. He came to my meetings. I held 11 week crusade there and he came every night. Arlindo's story was so amazing that I personally invited him to the United States and had him to tell his story from Washington State to Miami, Florida, right across the whole nation. 
I took him in a station wagon and, and I had him to tell that story. But it was a little before its time. If I could do it again, there would be thousands out to hear him. Uh, but in, in that case, there were only a few hundred out to hear him because uh, at that point, America wasn't awakened to, to, the, to, to the disturbance of, of people that are deranged in our country and emotionally upset that need help. And, and this man knew all about it. But I took him to Carnegie Hall, New York City. I took him to Constitution Hall, Washington, D.C. And in auditoriums all over this nation, I took this man. It cost me thousands of dollars in order to let this man uh, see America. But by living with him in Brazil for all that time, and he would take me out to eat. He worked in the government palace there. And so uh, I, I got to know him on a very close basis. Then when you live a man with a man three or four or five months every day, you really get to know him. You, you get the inner parts coming out. And, and this lesson has to do with my personal knowledge in a super way that very few people would ever get, you know. Uh, an, an interviewer comes and interviews a person for 30 minutes and puts it on television. You say, hey, that's wonderful. Well, you live with them about six months and it'll be more than wonderful. You'll know all about it, you see. I just wanted you to understand that this was not a 10-minute interview or an hour interview. This was living with a man in two continents, in South America and in North America. In your, in your reading, in Deuteronomy 18 and 10, God says, and now God is speaking to us for all time, not just for that generation, but for all time, God said, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, which is a heathen performance of offering up one of your children to a deity uh, to, for the blessing on the family, or that uses divination, that's any kind of, uh, of supernatural uh, situation, not of God, in order to know the future, or to know things that are not known by your natural mind, or your natural eyes, or your natural uh, feelings. Or an observer of the times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Now, now God said that these people should not, should not exist. Now, down in, uh, in Brazil, uh, this man belonged to such a low, uh, such a, a low uh, spiritism until uh, it was not permitted by the government to function. He was an illegal. And, and he tells fantastic stories that I don't ever get to them. He claims that he could disappear and the police would be all around him and couldn't see him uh, un under the power of the devil. Uh, now, they, they let spiritism in Brazil, but 40% of the people of the nation are spiritists. Uh, but uh, he was such a, such a low uh, spiritist into the terrible things of, uh, of the spirit world until his group were outlawed. And, and so we're dealing with uh, spiritism at its base, at its, at its lowest. The time I met Arlindo, uh, which was an amazing thing to me, uh, he worked in the office of the president of Brazil. Uh, you say, how do I know? Well, I went to visit him there. Uh, and it was a strange thing to see him at night uh, over there. Uh, and then to see him the next day, beautiful white gloves on, uh, a long tail coat, as he would bring people in to see the president. Uh, uh, he had a, uh, a fine position. And he told me that in the, in the many years, he had worked there, uh, not only in the president's office, but he'd worked in the Ministry of War and many other government agencies, that they had moved him around and around. I, I only tell you that to show you that a man can be uh, possessed of the devil and still hold a good job. And it's a thing that you can't quite understand. As you're going to see, as I tell you about him, uh, you, you won't be able to see how he could, during the daytime, hold a good job, and at nighttime, uh, be a witch doctor, as he was for 40 years. Arlindo uh, knows witchcraft more than any person I've met in the world. And I have met hundreds and hundreds of people related to witchcraft, hundreds of them. I have never met a person who understands witchcraft like this man understood witchcraft. And, and so, for me, it was a training time for me to understand how an alien entity could, could, uh, could control a human personality and yet permit that personality to function in business to make a good living. <laughs> it, it was, he didn't live in an insane asylum, you see. Now, we, we're, we're trying to show you here that we're not talking about crazy people. Uh, a, a person can, can live in a, in a million dollar home, a person can be a banker and be a witch, you see. Now, you gotta know that. If you don't know that, you've missed the whole thing. Uh, that it, we're not talking about insane people when we talk about witchcraft. Now, in this particular case, and your point number one, Arlindo claims that he was dedicated to the devil before he was born. We really shouldn't say that's a claim. 
Alindo was surrounded with his family, and, and, and so he had evidence of all of this. He was such a prominent witch doctor, he was known by tens of thousands of people. Uh, he wasn't a small item in the business, he was a big one. And, and so uh, it, it's not a matter of claims, it, it's a matter of reality. And we wouldn't have accepted this on claims. If we'd have met a stranger and he claimed that, we'd have forgotten it. But when you have members of his family still there today, uh, telling you, yeah, you better believe it, and it's worse than that, uh, then, then you know you're not talking about claims, you're talking about reality. He was dedicated to the devil before he was born because his mother, who was a Macumba spiritist. Now, the Macumba is, is, is possibly the, the greatest and the strongest uh, spiritist uh, organization in Brazil, Macumba. And uh, he was dedicated uh, uh, to a special and strong demon who was a prince before he was born. Now, a few days before Orlando's birth, a, a, a reputable witch doctor put hot chicken blood. The chicken's head was cut off in the ceremony, right while they were all there. And, and they removed uh, his mother's clothes from, the, from her body. And on her stomach, they poured this hot chicken blood and they made the form of a cross. Now, in most, in most uh, spiritist operations, they, they, they put religion in it and they put the cross in it but it means absolutely the opposite of what it means to you, just completely the opposite. So Arlindo's mother heard a masculine voice from her belly saying, he is my son. Isn't that something? Out of her belly came these words when they, when they dedicated her to the devil saying, he is my son. And it was a man's voice coming out of a woman's mouth. By the time Arlindo was three years old, alien entities were moving within him very strongly. He was unruly. He was disobedient. A spirit manifested in him called Dr. Rubenstein. And this spirit, it had manifested in a German doctor in a former life. That's what the spirit told him. And when this spirit manifested, Arlindo at three years of age could write prescriptions in Latin. <laughs> now, he didn't know Portuguese yet. And, and, and so sick people could take these prescriptions to the local pharmacist. And there at the, at the pharmacy, uh, he could read them and he could fill them. And, and, and so, and, and they wouldn't tell that a child three years old had written it. It wasn't even written, you know, a, 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 a three-year-old just scrawls along. No, this wasn't scrawling. Uh, this was written like a doctor would write a prescription and it was filled at the local druggist and a boy three years old was doing it. This called Alindo to be hated and to be praised. Uh, people that don't like you, they don't like you. Now, here's a man who had an acquaintance with 300 devils. Now, you'd have to know him. And I, I wish I had kept up with him. It's been a few years now since I've heard how he's gotten along down in Brazil. I understood Stan, he gave up his job with the government and went out in full-time ministry uh, to preach. I asked Arlindo how many spirits had manifested in him in his lifetime. Not continually, but in his lifetime. He replied that there were at least 300 that he knew by name that had manifested themselves in his body. I asked Orlando which spirits manifested in him the most, and he replied, and here you've got some spirit names. They're real interesting. The first one there is Ochala. Now, I, I, I had to give you the Brazilian pronunciation of those, otherwise you wouldn't be able to pronounce them like they do down there. Ochala, and he is the head of all spirits. So when they pray to Ochala, they're praying to the top spirit in the spirit world. Now, that could mean the one who is a prince over that part of the country uh, down there. And then they had Ochun, and Ochun is the Virgin Mary, the same as the Virgin Mary, a female spirit that they identified with the Virgin Mary. And then they had Obum, and Obum was known as St. George, and he was one of, their, one of their outstanding spirits. And then they had Ochafun. Ochafun, now you, you have to look over the right and see how it's spelled and see how they pronounce it. He is called the Holy Spirit. It, it is so mixed up, and, and, and almost, almost all of the spiritists of Brazil are Roman Catholics. They, they, they belong to both groups. And, and I have been inside the Catholic churches there and saw in the lobby where they sold paraphernalia that had to do with, with witchcraft. They don't consider it bad. They don't consider it evil. They consider it uh, an, an, an adjunct uh, to, uh, to their worship. And it's only us that call it bad. Uh, and so it's, it's another world. It is another world. And then they have Ochasis, who, who, who he prayed to as St. Sebastian. Then he had Abelut, or St. Lazarus, and he was a king of the cemeteries. This was one of the main ones that operated in him. 
he would find himself in a cemetery absolutely naked, sitting on top of a stone, uh, of a tombstone, cutting himself with, with stones and blood all over his body. Arlindo said that when Ab Abelut manifested himself, he would twist Arlindo's body so terribly that his assistants would have to pour oil on his limbs and work with them to straighten out his contorted joints when that spirit got through working through him. Now, Arlindo was a man about six foot tall, weighed about 250 pounds. He was a giant. Uh, he was a real strong, great man. Abelou uh, made, him, made him eat meat which had been left in the sun until it was rotten. Each one of these spirits made him do something different from the other spirits. Arlindo had to wash down this rotten food uh, down his throat with olive oil. Now, now, now uh, you couldn't normally eat rotten meat uh, with olive oil and keep it down, you see. And this spirit would make him do that. Uh, this Kinta, Arivel Sara, this spirit was crippled and limping. And he had a wife. In the spirit world, there are so many unrealities until it, it, it is amazing. Uh, some spirits uh, made uh, manifest rarely in him. Just once a year, they would m manifest in him. Some spirits called themselves by such titles as King of the Sun, King of Man, the Morning Star. The world is divided up into zones, according to this spiritist. Uh, various spirits rule over various different zones, such as the jungle spirits, the forest, the seas, the rivers, and other areas uh, that are set off by, by natural boundaries. Well, that's what the Bible teaches us. Uh, that there are principalities. A principality is an area over which a spirit, I mean a prince, uh, rules. I asked Arlindo who was the king of all these alien entities. He knew. And Arlindo said that all the witchcraft sex in Brazil. Now you see, Africa might be different. Uh, uh, in Brazil, consider Achula. That Achua, that first one you had up there, the head of all spirits. Arlindo, a handsome black man, said with a strong voice, the devils spoiled my life. I never had a normal childhood because the devils were in me. I never knew the love of a mother or a father. When I went to school, the spirits made, made me cause trouble in the school. They wouldn't let me study, and they caused me to fight even with the teacher. And when the teacher would give me work to do, a spirit would give her the answer before the teacher was through presenting the problem. This would make the teacher angry, and then the spirit would speak through my lips saying, I know more than you do, and this would make her even more angry with me, seeing that I was just a small boy. And one day when I was just eight years of age, a spirit manifested in me while in school, and I began to argue with the teacher. The spirit said, you're the teacher, but I know more than you do. And the teacher complained to the principal, and I was discharged from school. And so from a child, he was a troublemaker. And and, and words came out of him that he didn't speak himself. Now, his father had problems with him. At 16 years of age, the alien entities became so strong in this young man, Arlindo, and, and, and he would often faint on the streets. The powers of the devil caused him to faint and pass out. Once he was picked up and taken by an ambulance to the hospital and then to jail. At this time, Arlindo was back living with his parents, and one night a spirit manifested to him, and he did not come home until 2 a.m., and in the morning he came home, and, and he was still 16 years of age. Arlindo says, my father met me and said, what kind of an hour of the night is this to come home? Arlindo remembers the spirit inside of him, replied his father, it's none of your business. This angered my father, and he spoke bitterly to me, but the, but the arrogant entity in me argued back. My father reached for a piece of wood to strike me, and the demon said, if you're a man, you can hit me with that. But my father's arm became frozen in midair, and he could not even bring it down. And that spirit said, uh, what are you? My father said to the spirit, what are you? And the spirit within me responded, I am summa ki summa qua summa. And says, I lived long before you ever lived. My father did not believe until the spirit told him how he was a spirit who gave enchantments which made it possible for my father to get my mother to marry him when she did not want to. Now you're getting the involvements of spirit life in those countries, you see, to where uh, that, that, that demon is functioning even in getting people to marry one another. My father broke down and confessed that the spirit was right and that he now believed in the spirit. After that, my father supported me in my spirit work, his demon work. The entity, a summa ki summa qua, also said that he originally was an African who had died at the age of 165 years old. 
And this spirit claimed that he had lived in 350 different persons in previous times. Now you say, could that be true? Uh, yes. All the spirits that are functioning today are functioning in the time of Jesus. And they have lived in different people. When a person dies, they seek another place in order, in order for them to live. Uh, when Jesus cast those spirits out of the demoniac, they, they said, where can we go? Where can we go? And there were no men close by. They said, how about these pigs? They want to go somewhere because of manifestation. They can only manifest themselves when they have some kind of organism to manifest from. So what type of alien entities uh, did Arlindo have? The entities which dealt with Arlindo were mostly the chiefs of legions. Now, now, now he was no ordinary person. Uh, he, he was a... He, he was a top witch doctor. And, uh, and making a, a, a good salary with the government, uh, he, didn't, uh, uh, he didn't demand a lot of money for his work. Uh, he, he, he was a, kind of a good man in some ways, if you call a witch doctor good. Uh, he, he wasn't in it to see how much money he could squeeze out of people. Uh, he took some fees, of course, uh, but... Uh, having a good position, he didn't necessarily have to live this way. Uh, but uh, he says he only dealt with chiefs of legions. He didn't deal with little spirits uh, down at the bottom. And skull bones and crossbones called Arlindo my apparatus. I, I, would, I would like to uh, I go with that just for a moment, please. Uh, a, a spirit that is an entity, that is an intelligent personality uh, called call this man uh, uh, my apparatus. I operate through you. You're, you're my apparatus. Now, I want to tell you something. Anyone that permits the devil to function through them, you're only his apparatus. Now, I, I, I want to tell you now, you can serve him all your life. He has no affection to work. You're no more than a machine wearing out. Do you get it? You're no more than a sh machine wearing out. Then he gets him another machine. He has no feeling. The people in India that have served the devil for generations and generations and generations, one generation means no more than the next generation. He just wears out his apparatus. And so it called him, says, you are my apparatus. Uh, crossbones made Arlindo eat roaches. He called them shrimp. And, and, and skull bones made him eat poisonous toad frogs. Arlindo says this spirit made him cut himself with a dagger and pour rum over the wounds. And, and so he was in a in a terrible, terrible mess uh, uh, when, when Jesus found him uh, through, this, through this Protestant minister. Skull bones or crossbones called Arlindo's mother uh, for, for drinking his rum. He cursed Arlindo's mother for drinking his rum. Arlindo said that this spirit had an unhealing sore on his foot. Now, now he told me so many things about those, uh, those entities until I was simply amazed. There was one over there that was crippled, and here's one that had an unhealing sore in the spirit world, had an unhealing sore on his foot. He said, as long as he knew him for all those years, that sore, every time he saw him, that sore was still there. What does spiritism do for the people economically? Uh, Arlindo says uh, that spiritism keeps the people poor. Uh, condomble, you ought to put a circle there, condomble, a strong form of witchcraft, uses mostly blood sacrifices. Almost calls for blood every time. Chicken, goats, and, and sheep, and anything. Spiritism demands expensive clothes and costumes. The spirit, Izu, made Arlindo buy a $140,000 outfit in order to please him. So you had years and years of, of, of putting together the money to please one spirit. Uh, some devils demand a golden sword, or they will not manifest if you don't pr provide the golden sword. Spiritism teaches people not to believe in sin. Spiritism uh, does not believe in judgment. It does, it does not believe in the end of the world. It teaches reincarnation. And when people believe in reincarnation, it comes from the alien entities. They're the ones that teach it. They're the ones that come from. All spirits, all spirits uh, will, can live over and again and again inside of a, one human and another human and another human. And they never speak of sin and they never speak of faith. They don't know anything about it. The leading spirits told Arlindo that they had never died and that they were created and had lived even before Jesus was upon the face of the earth. So here are spirits identifying the Bible as being true, although they are in a world down there where the Bible has, has never been taught. All right. Arlindo was invited to a, a great witchcraft dancing session where some 4,000 uh, witchcraft followers were present and hundreds of witch doctors. He did not 
found the dances very good. Most, most of them did not manifest a great power, but were doing it themselves. Finally, finally uh, because he found fault, Alina was asked to show what he could do. He danced for hours in the spirits. There was an American dancer named Josephine Baker who was there to study witchcraft dances. She chose Arlindo to teach her, and for several months, he taught this American dance woman the Macumba dances. Uh, he trained her also to have spirits manifest in her to help her to dance. He danced as her partner in a number of nightclubs in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. That's what Americans do. They go to the devil to learn devil dances, put them on the platforms in America, and you don't know where they were the, the week before. When Orlando asked the spirits if they ever showed any kindness or affection toward him, he said there has never been an alien entity who had any affection for any human being.